Hello, I'm Kevin Gordon with Vallejo Bible College. Welcome to this edition of In the Classroom. Today we have a very special lesson today. We're going to be talking about the guidance of the Holy Spirit. The guidance of the Holy Spirit. This is a lesson that um, we all need to know more about and hopefully when we're done we will get a better understanding. Let us pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, we thank you for giving us this privilege of studying your word. We pray that you would please, Lord, forgive us for all of our sins. And Father, we ask that you will open our understanding. Thank you for your word, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You know, one prayer that I'm sure uh, most of us, if not all of us, have prayed as Christians is, Lord, please lead and guide me. That's a prayer that I'm sure a lot of us have prayed. I know I have um, all the time. <laughs> Lord, lead me and guide me. Because we want to go in the direction that he wants us to go. Whether we're making a life decision or if um, something is going on with our ministries, we want his guidance. But we want to go in the direction he wants us to go. And so the beautiful, the, the beautiful thing about that prayer is that it can be granted because truly God wants to guide us. That's his desire to guide us in the way that he wants us to go. So the subject of the guidance of the Holy Spirit, um, because of its depth, and many facets, it, it will take a lifetime to, to learn. Um, in these couple of sessions, we're just gonna barely touch the surface and hopefully uh, you will be motivated to learn more about it on your own, in your own personal studies uh, about the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So we're just gonna barely touch the surface. The first thing we wanna look at is the distinguishing sign of being led. The distinguishing sign uh, of being led. Uh, being led by the Holy Spirit is evidence or proof of belonging to Him. That's one of the evidence um, of being a Christian is being led by the Holy Spirit. And the Bible makes it very plain that being led is indeed, um, is evidence. In the book of Romans chapter eight and verse 14, the Apostle Paul uh, makes it very clear. Um, Romans eight fourteen, he said, for as many as are led, by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So being led by the Spirit is evidence of being um, a true born-again believer. Uh, let's look at this word led. For as many as are led. This word led is from the Greek word um, ego. Uh, matter of fact, it's a verb. And it appears in the New Testament uh, around 67 times. And it basically means led, guide, be led, allow oneself to be led. Now, among the different elements of the Greek verbs, um, of a Greek verb, you have what you call a tense, of course, and then you have uh, another element in the Greek verb called a voice. Now, basically the tense gives you the time and the kind of action. In other words, um, is the action going on now or is it gonna go on in the future? Is it a continuous action or is it a one-time action? And so that's what we mean by tense. In addition to tense here, we also have the voice of this verb. And we're going to get into which tense is this word led is in. Uh, but the voice bas basically indicates how the subject is related to the action. 
And so in other words, is the subject doing the action or is it being done upon the action or is the subject doing it upon, its, of, upon itself? In this particular instance, the word led in Romans 8.14 is in what you call the present tense. And so it's a continual action, a continual action. For as many as are led by the Spirit, a continual action. The word is also in what you call the passive voice. That's the voice that it's in. It's, it's passive. And when we say a passive voice, we're giving reference to the fact that the subject is receiving the action, is receiving the action. And so where, where Paul says, for as many as are led by the Spirit, The believer is receiving the action of being led. In other words, the believer is not leading himself, but he or she is being led by the Holy Spirit. That is wonderful. That's beautiful because it's, it's evidence of being born again, to be led by the Spirit. So Paul said, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So in other words, we are not leading ourselves, but we are receiving the guidance. And that's our desire to receive guidance from the Holy Spirit. We are receiving the guidance. We are receiving this action. Paul said, as as are led by the Spirit of God. And so again, the word led is lead, guide, um, be led, allow oneself to be led. Let me read a quote from Leon Morris. He said, we should understand the leading of the Spirit as a distinguishing sign of God's sons but not as making us sons. It is because you are sons that God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, Galatians 5.18. Being led by the spirit is the mark of all God's people. Amen. So being led of the spirit is a distinguishing sign of being a son or daughter of God. Now let's look at another point. God has always guided his people. So he has always guided his people. The Lord guides his people uh, in the way of truth. He would not guide us in the way of error or he would not guide us into a lie, but he will guide us in the way of truth. So when we look at the saints, of Old Testament times, we find this loving activity of God. And that's what being led or guided by God is. It, it's an activity of God, and it's a loving activity of God. He guides his people. When, when Israel was delivered out of the hands of the Egyptians, he guided them from e Egypt. And so when you look at um, the Pentateuch, were written by Moses, you, you will find that God led and guided his people when they left Egypt. So the Lord guided Israel and he did it with a pillar of a cloud by day and a pillar of a fire by night. So God actually manifested um, his, 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 his direction and he, he communicated which way to go through a cloud during the day, a pillar of a cloud during the day, and a pillar of fire by night. It says in uh, Exodus chapter 13, in verse 21 through 22, and the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way 
and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of, cloud, of, of fire by night from before his people. So his guidance for Israel, this is very interesting. His, his guidance for Israel was perpetual. Uh, it occurred continually. He didn't guide them for a day and stop, but he, continual, he continued to guide his people Israel. So God, he got, God guided them both by day and by night. So it didn't matter if the sun was shining or if it was at night, God still guided them. So his wonderful presence was there and again, as we said, it was perpetual. It was continual. It was ongoing. So the Lord promised to be with his children always. You know, God is with you right this very moment. Uh, wherever you may be, um, at the dinner table, um, on the couch in front of the fireplace, wherever you may be, viewing this uh, program, God is with you and he's with me as I'm sharing with you. And he's, he's willing and he's able to guide you in your life. He's willing and he's able to guide you. So there is no part or episode in life when he is not present. So there's never a time, if you have Christ in your life, there's never a time Never when he is not present. He's always right there. We may not always feel him. You know, he said, I'll be with you always. He didn't say you will feel me always, you know, um, but he's always with us. So both when the sun is shining and of course, when it's dark in the midnight hour, he is still right there. And so God also guided the children of Israel, not only when they left Egypt, um, he guided them in a pillar of a cloud during the day and a pillar of a fire by night. Wherever the cloud went, that's where they went, you see. Wherever he guided them, they followed. But in addition to that, God also guided Israel in all their journeys in the wilderness when they had the tabernacle, when they built the tabernacle, and when they had the tabernacle, the Lord guided them again in the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. So whenever the pillar moved, Israel knew it was time to move and follow the cloud. And that's how God designed it. Whenever the pillar moved, they knew it was time to pack up and time to go. God guided them. So whenever the pillar stayed, they encamped. So it was a time when God didn't move the pillar. And then they knew, okay, this is where we have to camp out for a while. And then when God was ready for them to move, he will move the pillar and they will follow the pillar. It says in Numbers chapter 9, and on the day that the tabernacle was reared up, the cloud covered the tabernacle, namely the tent of the testimony. And at even there was upon the tabernacle as it were the appearance of fire until the morning. Verse 16. So it was always the cloud covered it by day and the appearance of fire by night. And when the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle, then after that, the children of Israel journeyed and in the place where the cloud abode. There the children of Israel pitched their tents. And so that's how he guided Israel when they left Egypt and when they had the tabernacle. Um, what's very interesting is that the pillar can be seen. 
it wasn't a situation where they couldn't see it. They were able to actually see the pillar. So Israel needed to see the pillar for guidance. That, that, that's how they would know which way to go. They will have to see it. When it moved, they moved. So in this loving activity of God, we see his love. We see his wisdom, his ability and knowledge. God knew his people. He knew his people. He loved his people. And through this way of guidance, we see his wisdom and his ability and his knowledge. They needed to be able to see the pillar. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll continue um, the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We were talking about how God was guiding his people by a pillar of a cloud by day and a pillar of a fire by night. By night. Let's take a quick look at uh, the cloud and the fire. Because when you look at this, the cloud was not for night. The cloud was for the daytime. Um, if the cloud was at night, it would have been difficult for them to see. But it was very important for them to see. And so God allowed them to have the cloud during the day. And um, it was very transparent in the day. The pillar of fire uh, was not for the daytime, but it was for the night so that they can see. And uh, God provided those means whereby he can guide them. So we see again his ability, his love, his knowledge, and his wisdom. So God knew when to make the change from fire to the cloud. He knew exactly when to do it. And he did it um, in the morning. In the morning, God changed a pillar of fire into a pillar of a cloud. So sometime during the morning time, that pillar of fire began to transform itself into a pillar of a cloud. It says in that 15th verse in um, Numbers 9, in verse 15, the appearance of fire until the morning. So the Lord promised to be with his children always. And uh, there is no part or episode in life when he is not present. So he was present with them in the daytime and he was present with them in the nighttime. God has a very unique and special will for your life. He has a will for your life and he guides us according to his will. He guides us according to his will. As we look to the Spirit of Christ for divine direction, His Spirit shows us and leads us into the will of God. So our target in life should be the will of God. Um, and that is where God will lead us into His will. Therefore, He desires us to understand His will. He wants us to understand his will. He will guide us according to his will. And he wants us to understand his will. Paul makes a very interesting statement in the book of Ephesians, chapter 5 and verse 17. He said, Wherefore, 
Be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Now notice that Paul is giving us a sharp contrast. He said, be not unwise, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. So this word unwise is uh, from your Greek word Ephron, and it basically means foolish or ignorant. Foolish or ignorant. So be ye not foolish or be ye not ignorant. Be ye not unwise, but understanding. Understanding. Um, tsunami. It means to perceive clearly, to understand, to perceive clearly, to understand. So God wants us to be aware and understand his will. He wants us to know his will. He wants us to know his will. So this, in this passage of Ephesians, the saints are urged to understand God's will. So here in this passage, we, we see something very interesting. It's simple, but when you think about it, it makes sense. His will is for you to know his will. That's his will. It's his desire for you to know his desire. It's his will for you to know his will. You know, many times we say, well, I want to know God's will concerning this. I want to know God's will concerning that. And, you know, we, we hear it all the time. We say it all the time. But when you think about it, that's a good place to start. His will is for you to know his will. That's, that's a beautiful thing to know, that God wants me to know his will. So where is his will? Where can we find the will of God? Where can we find it? Well, the answer to that is we can find his will in his word. That's where his will is. If you want to know God's will, get into the word of God. So the Holy Spirit leads us uh, by different means. But the primary way God leads us is through the scriptures. For the word of God is the will of God. It's the will of God. Even if we think or feel that God is leading us in a particular area, that direction must be in line with the scriptures. So whatever area you, 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 may, you may feel or you may think or someone may have told you, you should go in this area. If it's not in line with the scriptures, that's not the way to go. It must be in line with the scriptures because the scriptures, that's the will of God. So in addition to the word, he can lead us through people. He can lead us through circumstances, inward promptings, or even our minds. Sometimes the Lord put things on our minds and on our hearts or whatever method he decide to use. But it will always be in line with the scriptures. It will not be contrary to the word of God. It will always support what he has already said. So it's very important to know what the scripture teach about a particular situation and to ask for his strength and guidance through prayer. You know, uh, sometimes people will, you know, share with me some decisions that they may have to make. And uh, often I tell them, you know, pray about it, pray about it, because after that, that's what that's that's what we have to do. We have to pray about it. We have to search the scriptures and pray and search the scriptures and God will guide you. You will be able you, you, you can see just like how Israel saw the cloud and knew which way to go. You can see in the scriptures which way to go and that's the way he wants you to go 
So that's all we have time for today on this edition of In the Classroom. Thank you so much for being with us. We pray that the lesson was a blessing to your heart. If you want more information about Vallejo Bible College, visit our website at www.vallejobiblecollege.org and there you'll see uh, our um, staff, um, our many different programs that we have available, our upcoming online classes. Um, if you want to drop us a note, uh, you can email me at kgordon at vallejobiblecollege.org. That's kgordon at vallejobiblecollege.org. If you want to see this episode again, you can go to our YouTube channel and uh, you can look at it there. God bless you and have a wonderful day.